Folks, welcome back to CGC Sawmill. Um, we're down at the lumber yard again, we're down at the sawmill again today. And uh, we're going to go through, maybe we'll show a couple little things before we get started. But today's episode, we have some one buys that are live edge that have been sliced off of uh, logs. We need to clean those up, take the live edge off of them, make it into straight uh, one buys. And then we have over there, we have couple more ash logs a nice long 16 17 footer that we're going to make into a four and a half by eight beam and uh, we are going to need to in between milling these one buys and milling that one we are going to need to do a blade change so we'll have a blade change on this episode again and just to show you some other stuff so now, the last time you were with me, I had these 4x6s and that one 6x8. Uh, I did end up just stacking them to the side right now, making another pile. But what we have out here, so these are my stickers, right? So most of these stickers came from a big pine tree that I uh, cut down to make into 2x8s. Well, the whole first section of it was full of ants. <laughs> so I ended up making it into stickers. And if you look real close, maybe at some of these stickers, you'll be able to see where the ants bore through some of the wood. It was pretty much hollow in the center. You can see here, you know, they had, they had bored through a lot of it, so it was hollowed out, so I didn't want to use it as support beams. You can see there's another one over there. And then you've seen me throw my wood, uh, my scraps, over to the side out out the back side of this building here the back side of the building so for this i used to throw them on the ground and then i would mill them up or just cut them into sections like that and then toss them into a pile and then they go get stacked all that ends up being burned to heat my house heat the hot water or i heat the pool with it uh, maybe i'll show in another episode how i heat my pool with my outside wood stove here this pile of uh, cutoffs there's a whole bunch of them i put that up in the air now so that when i want to cut it into chunks it's not near the ground i don't end up dulling a blade on my chainsaw also a second purpose was is i can come in with the forks on the tractor and i can lift a pile of these off and go move them somewhere else my thought on that was that uh, someday I would buy a chipper that can maybe handle 8 or 12 inch pieces of wood and I can make a lot of wood chips. Wood chips are great for gardens. Uh, adding that wood to your garden and letting it just decompose over time or just taking a stack of wood a stack of wood chips and just letting it sit in a pile for a couple years and then add it to your garden it's better than adding fertilizer to the garden for sure i've found um but it has can have dual purposes what i could also do is uh, move a lot of this start stacking it in piles somewhere and then maybe for one day or a weekend rent a chipper and just make myself a lot of chips and all of this stuff is sized out for being able to go into the outside wood stove for heating today we have three logs three ash logs sitting here that uh, we'll roll up onto the bunk of the sawmill
Okay, that finishes up those parts. All those one buys there. We got uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces out of that, and we've got some one by six, four one by sixes, and three one by fives. All right, we got to change a blade now, and then we got to mill that guy. I don't think I want to do that big guy with that uh, somewhat dull blade. It'll be hard to push through. So let's get to changing the blade. So I'll raise that up in the air so it's at working level. Take the tension off the blade. I like to give it a smack in, loosen it up. Smack it in a little bit. All right, we've got a situation. So we have bearings that go in the back side of the blade so that they hit that, uh, they, the blades can't push in too far. Um, you know, if you, you push too hard, your blades will push back that way. And there's a bearing in here that can turn. It'll hit against that and it'll turn to keep it from pushing too far back. You wanna make sure that those are loose and can rotate. This one is seized up, which I've never replaced this one. I've got 130 hours on this, so it was probably time. This one I've replaced already on this one here. This one rotates freely. This one over here, which we can see a little better, it won't move. I thought something got jammed in there. I was trying to see if I could get it out. Um, what I'll have to do is take this nut off right here, this bolt off right here, and uh, drop this down. I have more of them back at the shop. So we'll take that off. We gotta go get an Allen wrench, take that off. We'll just see if it's something stuck in there, or if it's the bearing is just worn out. If the bearing's worn out, which I can feel some cupping on that right here. I think I'll just replace the bearing. They're only a couple bucks a piece. All right, we'll get back to that in a second. Okay, I'm back with the bearing and an Allen wrench. Uh, it's the bearing. Uh, let's see, this is a, let's put it out in front here. PGN bearing, right? So it's just a small little bearing. Uh, let's see if we can, it is a 6002 RSCS. Uh, a couple bucks a piece. I think I bought a dozen of them in one box. And then uh, we're going to need a 15 16th uh, Allen wrench to loosen it. Let's see what we can do. Pretty tidy lefty loosey. Remember where I am. Turn in. Ah, wow, that was in there good. All right. Oh boy, once I lower that down, that bearing turns pretty well. Like there was something stuck in there. So let's pull that out of there before we pull that out. So let's see. So it definitely was the bearing the bearing is bad you should be able to spin the outer compared to if you hold the inner you should be able to spin that outer it does not spin so that is locked up so here's the new one you can spin the outside when you're holding the center so now that bearing is shut so we'll clean up these couple of washers clean up this bolt and those couple of washers and reinstall that bearing in its place Alright, we can just place this bearing back up in here. Start the 
thread that in there. Grab a healing wrench. up on there and we can see that spins nice So a lot of them tell you 20 to 25 foot pounds of pressure. This one actually doesn't say that. It has this rapid change, proper tension, no tension, and it shows you this seated all the way in. Um, but if you read the manual, it says 20 to 25 foot pounds on this is probably your best bet. I try to set it close to 25 or 20 between 24 and 25 is what I try to set it at. Uh, it seems to work the best for me. in here so we don't want to put this back side of us. Maybe we can put that up just so it doesn't fall off. I've done it before with uh, ATV putting the Wrench on it, but sometimes you can slide because it's slippery enough. But I don't think that one's going to go. I've actually hit it with the, the mall and then moved it before. Move it a little bit. What's that? So you did have to hit it a lot to get it that far. So the other choice is this guy and this guy. Take a couple tries at this. Lift it up in the air. It's kind of on that log now. So sometimes you can now push it. Oh, it falls off of that. Almost there. How come we gotta have it closer to the blade? Because the blade only goes so far this way. Yep. So if you bring in this, well, I'll just move it over the top. Move it back down.
All right, so we got to introduce my youngest son, Christian. He's out here to help. He's uh, definitely does his own YouTube stuff. I used to. Well, I used to. He still do a couple of shorts I saw the other day. Uh, all we have is this. Uh, I cut it down to 16 feet 6 inches. And we're trying to move it forward. When I rolled it on here, you can see we have a gap. It's probably about 8 inches there. All right, so what I have here right now is I have nine inches here and I'm at 12 inches up right now. What I'd like to get is I was hoping to get two four and a half by eight beams out of this and it is all good except for right in this area. I had a little bit of a, this, this part was a little narrow right here. I had a little crook in it right in this spot here. You can see I can't get my eight and get I'm gonna end up with some bark on there to get my eight and even if I tried to go the other way to get my eight I'd end up with some with some bark on it so I think I'm just going to flip it one more time and cant it up so that it's fully canted and then take another look at it and see what I can do maybe if I leave one of the four by eight four and a half by eights with a little bark on it that'll be all right and get the other one so full no bark can't you can see this side's pretty clean this side here that edge there is pretty much cleaned up except for right up there at the top so we'll flip this over take another run at it 
There's two uh, 16, they're about 16.6. They're four and a half by eight inch beams out of white ash. You can see we got right into the pith on that one. Right in that area, all the way down through it, or right down the center of that pith. I think that wraps it up for today. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, my glasses on straight. So. Those beams are definitely a job getting the beams, especially out of uh, that hardwood. That's real hardwood. I put a brand new blade on there, but uh, I'm not sure if it uh, got sharpened as well as I thought it did. Or it could be that uh, because it sat there, sat hanging for a couple weeks, they kind of, they'll dull over time just sitting out. It did get a little rain on it, but I had oil on it. So, one more view of this and. We're going to leave those set right there for today. Next time I come out, I'll come out with a tractor. We've got one there. we got all three of these guys. We'll go put them in the pile. Some nice beams. And we just got two more logs out there. One's an 8-footer and one's a 16-footer, which I'm going to cut in half. And we'll probably get some more 4x6s and some 1x1s. We have some more one by stuff here out of that that we need to... Um, take the live edge off of and then we can stick it over here all right thanks for watching again have a good one bye